All right, rolling right along. You, he's right. He's ready. My God. <laughs> Andrew Strombeck began teaching courses in American literature. Li oh, oh, woof, woof, sorry. <laughs> began teaching courses in American literature, history, and culture in Wright State's Department of English in 2007. After earning his PhD in English at the University of California, Davis. Is that correct? That's, that's right. Okay. There's a comma, and it threw me off. Oh. California Davis. <laughs> All right. Awesome. <laughs> he teaches on topics ranging from the literature of the network society to the literature of the 1950s to the liter literature of popular television series Mad Men. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, thank you, Mad Men. He has published articles on 20th and 21st century American literature and culture in a number of journals and is currently at work on a monograph about the literature and art of New York's Lower East Side from 1974 to 1990. His 20 by 20 is titled Bestsellers and Anti-Bestsellers of the 1950s and 60s. That's an awesome title. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Strombeck. <laughs> Well, thank you, Chris, and thank you, Shana, for inviting me. This is a really amazing event. I've had some tough acts to follow here. Wait, i got to start. Uh, so <laughs> these are, uh, as the Mar McCarthyism swept the country, Joyce Scholar Henry Morton Robinson found success late in life with a feel-good nostalgic novel about Stephen Formoyle, a priest rumored to be modeled on New York's Cardinal Spellman. Uh, fitting the business-focused 50s, um, Formoyle is also quite a manager. Uh, well, we're on to Lionel Trilling. So part of the humor of this is I get behind in the slides and then have to catch up. Uh, so Lionel Trilling, uh, the liberal imagination, this was not a bestseller at the time, but uh, Trilling went on to sort of dominate American letters in the 1950s, uh, part of the New York School, along with Mary McCarthy and Dwight McDonald. Uh, from here to eternity, uh, 1951 bestseller. Uh, well, the, the most interesting thing about this is that Ernest Hemingway sneered that um, James Jones was enormously skillful fuck up and his book will do great harm to our country. I hope he kills himself. So uh, Hemingway, big fan of James Jones. Uh, next up we have the anti-bestseller, uh, Got a Man at Yale. Uh, this account of the author's experience with quote unquote atheism and collectivism at Yale uh, would Buckley would use the book to launch his career as a leading voice of the rising conservative movement and editor of the National Review. Here's where I pause and look at the slide and wait for the next one to come. Okay, uh, Silver Chalice, lots of religious themed bestsellers in the 1950s. Uh, this recounts the story of a young silversmith who was commissioned by the Apostle Luke to fashion a holder for the cup Jesus used the Last Supper. Uh, the 1954 film version was so bad that Paul Newman took out an ad apologizing for it. It's really <laughs> great detail of history there. Uh, same year, anti-bestseller, uh, didn't do well at the time. Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man, probably one of the most important and influential African-American novels, uh, an acute scrutinizer of the post-Jim Crow pre-civil rights years. Ellison never went on to write another novel, uh, but really, why bother when your first novel is Invisible Man? Uh, okay, bestseller, 1953. Uh, again, uh, lots of Christian-themed novels in the 50s. Uh, this one was about um, the power of Jesus' robe, uh, the one allegedly taken by the Roman Tribune Marcellus, uh, who after carrying out the crucifixion, eventually converts to Christianity as a result. Uh, everyone's really happy about this. Uh, Anti-bestseller, uh, the philosophical investigations. Um, uh, so this is the worst book to be in a philosophy seminar with uh, because everyone will sort of sneer at your ability, n inability to know philosophy because you're just an English major and everyone thinks you shouldn't. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, really important book in the history of <laughs> philosophy. Uh, all right. Uh, Bestseller in, the 19, in 1954, a 995-page book about medicine, biology, chemists, and physicists uh, fit for a decade in which science exploded as a discipline. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's mostly remarkable that a 995-page book about medicine, biology, chemists, and physicists was a bestseller. Uh, Anti-bestseller for that year, uh, The Lord of the Rings was a sleeper. Um, did not really pick up until the early 60s when it was published in paperback. Um, it's not that they didn't sell at all, but they, they were not bestsellers at all at the time. Yeah. So they, they had to, to <laughs> find some time to find their audience of, um, yeah, D&D fans forever. Uh, all right, uh, 1955 bestseller, uh, Herman Wauk's Marjorie Morningstar. It's a, let's see, uh, it's about a woman who, or a new, young New York City girl who dreams of becoming an actress meets a man who's no good for her, 
and after sleeping with him, reverses course and ends up marrying a completely opposite man and moving to the suburbs. Hold on, time for Lolita. Um, the 55 anti-bestseller, very unlike that book. Um, it's uh, Nabokov's novel about an older man's attraction to a 13-year-old. It's all a metaphor for art. Uh, this was received as part of a rising sexual revolution, but ultimately remains important for the intricate puzzles it offers its readers and its place in advancing modernist experimentation. Uh, 56 bestseller, William Brinkley, Don't Go Near the Water, an episodic comedic book about Navy PR officers during World War II, a kind of catch-22 without the scathing critique of war. It's about all I have to say at it, about it. Uh, now's another moment when I stand and wait for the next slide to come. Here it is, though. Howl. Um, the sound came from the Sixth Gallery in San Francisco and tapped into the generational tension of the 50s, inspiring something of a poetic and social revolution. Howl became a central text of the beat movement and confessional poetry. 57 bestseller. Uh, By Love Possessed, the story of a good lawyer who is always right. It's also the story of an author whose pretensions to literary greatness were destroyed by critic Dwight MacDonald, who described the novel as written in prose of an artificiality and complexity that approaches the impenetrable, uh, and whose success he attributes to a rising fashion for unintellectual middle brows. Uh, Anti-bestseller, Atlas Shrugged, uh, the sound of this book hitting, the thud of this book hitting the bedroom floor was the start of the, the, the thud of the post-New Deal consensus shattering. Objectivism continues to provide powerful ammunition for people who corner you at cocktail parties and interrupt college philosophy courses. <laughs> uh, the 58 bestseller, uh, Dr. Zhivago, something of a Cold War classic. Um, it's, okay, in hopes of a, this, the interesting thing about this is the CIA took the step of publishing this book and distributing it in the Russian language uh, throughout Europe. So it was sort of, um, I don't know, propaganda. Uh, Anti-bestseller, Chinua Achebe, Things Fall Apart. His scorching account of Western influence on Nigeria emerged as the single most high profile novel by a non-white sub-Saharan African, uh, particularly after Achebe publicly dismissed Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness for its depiction of Africans. It continues to influence writers like uh, Chimamanda Adichie. All right, uh, 59 bestseller, Leon Uris's Exodus, uh, his pro-Israeli theater or thriller reflected a lifetime of military enthusiasm. He was repeatedly photographed with tanks and machine guns and developed himself as kind of a proto Tom Clancy, who I don't know if anyone remembers anymore. Uh, okay, uh, finally, as the, the 50s sort of uh, trundled to a close, William Burroughs' ill-understood classic went on to influence a wide swath of science fiction and avant-garde literature of the late 20th century. Thank you very much.